The roots of Finnish metal can be traced all the way back to the 1980s, and among all the trailblazers, few shine quite as bright as Stradivarius. The band were among the first to spread the word of Finnish metal out into the world, and they were key figures in the evolution of power metal. Since then, Stradivarius have cemented their place as timeless favorites of Finnish music, whose songs can still be heard everywhere from festivals to karaoke bars. Still, a lot has happened in the band's 40-year existence, exemplified by the fact that there haven't been any original members in the group for years. This alone makes it worth delving a little deeper into the story of Stradivarius and find out what the band had to endure to get where they are now. Stradivarius was first formed in 1984 under the moniker Blackwater. The group's original lineup consisted of drummer Tuomo Lassila, bassist John Viherva and guitarist Staffan Strollman. The following year Timo Tolki replaced Strollman and slowly the band's early hard rock sound started to take shape. In 1986 Viherva left Stradivarius and he was replaced by Jyrki Lentonen. After securing a recording contract and tapping Antti Ikonen as their keyboard player, the band released their debut album Fright Night in 1989. After embarking on a short European tour, Jyrki Lentonen decided to quit the group. Following Lentonen's departure, Jari Bem was recruited as the band's new bass player, although Dima Tolki played all the bass parts on the group's next album, 1991's Stradivarius II, which was retitled Twilight Time internationally. Even though the group had achieved only marginal success in Finland, Twilight Time proved to be a hit in Japan, where it was named Best International Album of the Year. In 1993, Jari Kainulainen replaced Bem in the band, and the following year Stradivarius released their third album, Dream Space. Soon the group headed out for their first shows in Japan, after which Tolki decided to quit singing in the group in order to focus solely on guitar. Eventually, Timo Kotipelto was chosen as the band's new frontman, and Stradivarius released their next album, Fourth Dimension, in 1995. Be it the new vocalist or the quality of the songs, Fourth Dimension was the band's first album to chart in Finland. Timo Tolki's compositions had slowly started to become more symphonic and complex, which led to friction with Tuomo Lassila and Antti Ikonen. Tolki felt that their skills were no longer up to par and thus decided to fire both of them. In their place, Stradivarius recruited drummer Jörg Michael and former Ingve Malmsteen and Dio keyboardist Jens Johansson. The new lineup of Stradivarius made their debut on Episode, which was released in 1996. Musically, all the pieces had finally fallen into place as the band's signature power metal sound was on full display, which also reflected in the record sales, as Episode proved to be the group's best-selling album yet. Episode's success was quickly surpassed the following year when Stradivarius released their sixth album, Visions, which went gold in Finland. The record has since cemented its place as one of the greatest power metal albums of all time, and the single Black Diamond went on to become one of the band's biggest songs. In 1998, Stradivarius released their eighth album, Destiny, which reached number one in Finland, while the single SOS reached number two. This was followed up by 2000's Infinite, which also reached number one, going platinum as well. The single Hunting High and Low also proved to be a big hit, and has since become possibly the biggest song of Stradivarius' career. After floundering for so many years, Stradivarius had finally climbed to the top of the Finnish metal scene. The sky was the limit, but it didn't take long for storm clouds to start gathering. In 2002, Stradivarius began working on their next record, which ended up being a double album. Elements Part 1 and 2 were released in 2003, and both charted at number 2 in Finland. The Elements albums were musically very ambitious and can be seen as the culmination of the band's sound up till then. By this point, Stradivarius had been going for nearly 20 years, so it shouldn't come as a surprise that soon the band started to unravel. First, Timo Tolki suffered a nervous breakdown and claimed that he had gotten stabbed. Then, it was announced that Timo Kotipelto and Jörg Michael had parted ways with Stradivarius, with Katrina Viijala and Anders Johansson being announced as their replacements. Later, Tolki said that both this and his alleged stabbing had been publicity stunts brought on by his bipolar disorder. Whatever the case may be, in reality, his relationship with Kotipelto and Michael had deteriorated significantly. Kotipelto, for his part, blamed this on Tolki's dictatorial working style. In any case, Stradivarius regrouped and released their self-titled album in 2005. The record received an extremely mixed response from the band's fans, as the group had decided to forego their signature power metal style in favor of a more straightforward hard rock sound. 
After the album's release, relationships within the group continued to deteriorate and Tolki decided to fire Jari Kainulainen. He was replaced by Lauri Porra from Timo Kotipelto's solo band. In 2008, Stradivarius began working on a new album, but the band's inner problems hindered the process significantly. Eventually, in 2008, Tolki announced that he had disbanded Stradivarius. As the sole owner of the band's name, that was his right, but the group's other members disagreed. Eventually, a deal was made and Tolki agreed to sign over the name Stradivarius to Kotipelto, Johansson and Michael. After this, Matias Kupiainen was tapped as the band's new guitarist and Stradivarius set out for the first time without their former leader. In 2009, Stradivarius released the album Polaris, which reached number 2 in Finland. This was followed up by Elysium in 2011, which topped the charts. It seemed as though Tolki's departure had done nothing to hinder the group's success. However, this didn't stop further lineup changes, as Jörg Michael decided to leave the band in 2011 to spend more time with his family. After a short farewell tour, Michael was replaced by Rolf Bieleve, with whom Stradivarius released Nemesis in 2013. Since then, the band have released two more albums, with the latest, Survive, being released in 2022. In many ways, Stradivarius are the epitome of Finnishness. Even though their songs more often bring to mind dragons and great battles rather than sauna and northern melancholy, the story of Stradivarius is first and foremost a story about Sisu or Perseverance. Most bands would have packed it in a long time ago, but Stradivarius still keeps going. Lineup changes are a burden to any band, but Stradivarius have been able to push through them and come back each time stronger than ever. If that's not Sisu, I don't know what is. So it's pretty safe to assume that Stradivarius aren't going anywhere for a long time. And thank god for that. Cause is there really anything better than seeing Hunting High and Low at the top of your lungs at a summer festival?